Hi guys, so what we're going to be looking at in this video is non-concurrent full systems which comes under Unit 5, your mechanical principles and application from BTEC National Qualification. So the objective of this video is to look at a non-concurrent coplanar force system with four forces acting upon an object, okay? And from that we need to determine the resultant and the equilibrium force algebraically, okay? And this um, maps to the pass criteria P1 for unit five, okay? So what we're gonna be looking at from here is uh, for the non-concurrent force system, okay, we need to calculate uh, the magnitude and direction of the resultant force and the equilibrium. So what that means is we're gonna take all these forces um, and return them into a resultant force acting upon our point, okay, here. Uh, and then from there, we're gonna determine its magnitude, so how, how big that force will be, its direction, okay, which direction it will be traveling, and then, um, to keep it in a state of static equilibrium, we need to calculate the equili equilibriant, okay? And so that would be 180 degrees apart from the resultant. From there, because we have, because this is a non-concurrent force system, we don't have a point of concurrency and we have a distance. So we have a moment. So what we need to do is calculate the total turning moment. And then Using all that information, we are then going to calculate the perpendicular distance from the line of action, okay, to the pivot point, okay. So how far will the resultant and the equilibrium move, okay, on this line of action from our pivot point, which is here. So before we start solving our non-concurrent force system, what we need to do is we need to take a look at the sign convention, okay, because this is really important when it comes to solving this type of problem, okay. So we've covered in the past with our concurrent force systems that if you've got a force that is on the horizontal and to the right, okay, it's going to be positive. If it's on the horizontal and to the left, it's going to be negative. If it's on the vertical and it's upwards, it's going to be positive. And if on the if it's going downwards, okay, on the vertical, it's going to be negative. Um, but in our force system, we've got um, somewhere in between, okay. So we've got uh, one that's up and to the right. We've got one that's up and to the left, okay. So what we're going to have to do is work out uh, their component, okay. Um, the horizontal and vertical component. Okay, so that's where this part, okay, comes in into action. Okay, so we're going to use this. We need to keep this in mind. Okay, and then when it comes to the moment, okay, it, determining on whether the force is going to be either a positive or a negative will depend on whether it's going to pull the object either clockwise or anti-clockwise. Okay, so for example, uh, in this one here going straight down, okay, force two, we can see that that is going to pull our object in a clockwise direction. So when it comes to working out the moment of that force, we are going to have a, uh, a clockwise force. So it's going to be a positive value. OK, whereas on F1, we're going to have it's up and to the right. OK, so what we're going to have to do is calculate the, uh, the vertical component and the horizontal component of that force. And so the horizontal would pull it in a clockwise direction, but the vertical would pull it in an anti-clockwise direction. So you'd end up with a positive and a, a negative value on that when we come to calculate that. Okay, so really important that you keep in mind the sign convention. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually start going through and solving our um, our force systems. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and calculate, bring all of our horizontal and vertical forces into two forces so that we can calculate the, hor the uh, resultant. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna also calculate the, the total moment of all the forces as well. Okay, so um, best way to start is to create a little table. There are a couple of ways you can do this, but the way I like is the table. Okay, that way you can see all of your results and okay, you can sort of analyze what you've done so far. And it's easy to go back and see if you've made any mistakes. Um, so what I would do is start by placing the force and then actually going through your um, each one of these components here. Okay, so working out the horizontal component, the vertical component, the moment of force of the horizontal and the moment of the vertical in this column here. Okay, and then all of a sudden you get to the bottom, you can just total them up and work with them from there. So first one I would do is start at force one. We've got a nine kilonewton force. Okay, but as you can see, it's not on the horizontal or, or directly on the vertical. So what we need to do is we need to calculate the horizontal component and the vertical component. So nine cosine 60 equals 4.5 and nine sine 60 equals 7.9 or 7.79. Okay, and because in our sign convention, okay, we've got 
up and to the right, both of those values are going to be positive. Okay, and then from there, you can take those forces that you've calculated to then calculate the moment of the horizontal. Okay, so what we've got now is effectively a 4.5 force heading in this direction and a 7.79 force heading up in that direction. Okay, and you times in that by so for the horizontal moment, okay, so it's from this point here, okay, in our diagram, this point here, so our horizontal moment, okay, is is the force is pushing in this direction so it's going in this direction so from that point here it's going to be three meters so 4.5 times 3 gives us our 13.5 and then for the vertical same process applies from this point here so it's pushing up okay so the distance from our point here to where the force is acting is going to be two meters so 7.79 times 2 would give us our minus 15.58 okay so it's going to pull it anti-clockwise effectively so it's going to be a negative value okay. and all you need to do is then start going through the table okay and calculating your horizontal component your vertical component your horizontal moment and your vertical moment okay so in the second one it's nice and easy it's a vertical force it's going down so there's no horizontal component but it is going down so our sign convention says it's going to be minus three okay and because there's it's going vertically down there's no horizontal moment so all we need to do is calculate which the vertical moment which would give us uh sorry a uh, moment which will be sort of from this point here so from a pivot point all the way along it's pulling down okay so it's going to be three kilonewtons times two meters which give us a six kilonewton meters okay then we just go through doing each one just being mindful of the sign component the sign convention okay so uh, force free okay is a uh, it's a four kilonewton force okay and it's going up and to the left so we're going to have a horizontal component which is negative and a vertical component which is going to be positive okay so from our sign convention now because this is this force is acting directly on our pivot point there's no distance okay so we've got no distance there's no moment so the two moments for the vertical and the horizontal would be zero and then we get to uh, force four which is a 15 kilonewton force and it's on the horizontal and it's pulling to the left so it's going to be a negative 15 for that horizontal force so that'll be negative 15 uh, kilonewtons no vertical component so it'll be zero and then so 15 kilonewtons times three meters would give us a minus 45 kilonewton meters moment of that force and there's no vertical so that would be zero and then that is the, all of the forces accounted for and then all you're left to do then is then go through and at the bottom in the totals column just total up the values for each one of the columns okay and what we're going to do is we're going to use the horizontal and the vertical component the totals of those two columns to determine our resultant okay and we're going to use the moment of force for the horizontal and the vertical to calculate our total moment so our next step is to calculate the magnitude and direction of the resultant force so what we've done is we've taken all of our four forces and we've turned them into a horizontal force and a vertical force so um, looking at the sign convention what you can see here is so we've got a minus 13 on the horizontal so that's going to be heading to the left okay but we've got a positive in the vertical so it's going to be heading upwards and so you can see we've got a right angle triangle and this green dashed line is going to be our resultant force okay with the angle between the horizontal and the resultant as our as our angle our direction so because we've got a right angle triangle we can use our pythagoras theorem and we can use the values that we've we've got punch them in and we can then calculate the resultant so our horizontal squared plus our vertical component squared uh, the square root of those gives us our resultant which would be 15.49 kilonewtons and that's our resultant force and then from there we can use our horizontal and vertical component using the inverse of the tan uh, function to calculate what the angle would be so we, it comes back at minus 27.19 okay so from this point here if you can imagine the result is going to be heading off in this direction at 27 degrees so from there heading up in that direction minus 27 degrees so if you were to add you know from from the horizontal line the direction would be 152.81 degrees okay and then 
we know that to keep something in static equilibrium, equilibrium if we've got two, if we've got a, a resultant force of 15.49 to keep it static. Okay, we need an equilibrium of the same magnitude. Okay, so our equilibrium would be 15.49, and it would act in the opposite direction. So just add 150, 150, 180 degrees uh, to that value, and you would get your direction. Okay, for your resultant force. If you imagine the resultant force is going to be heading in this direction. Now, if we were dealing with a concurrent system, so where all of the forces run through a point of concurrency, we wouldn't have any moment. OK, so all of the forces would act on this point here and so would the resultant and the equilibrium. But because we have moment, OK, our line of action of our forces is going to move. OK, so what we need to do is we need to calculate the sum of the moment for the for the force system. So in this case, it's going to be minus 31.5 minus 9.58 which gives us minus 41.08. And then once we've found the moment, we know the resultant force. So we can then rearrange our uh, moment formula to give us the distance. So we could moment divided by the resultant force to give us minus 41.08 divided by 15.49 to equal minus 2.65. Okay, And that's the distance, the perpendicular distance of what, for example, if you had, if it was, if it didn't have any moment that the force the resultant force will be heading in this direction at minus 27.19 degrees okay but because we have moment the per you know the, the the moment the our our force is going to move in this direction 2.65 meters so once you've calculated all of these values uh, that's the problem complete um so as far as we need to go for the p1 criteria uh, just a couple of things to mention okay so when calculating uh, the magnitude and direction of the resultant force um bring it to the so it's um got an angle with respect to the horizontal so the, the zero degree line on the horizontal and do the same with your equilibrium as well um also another just a note to mention as well so the sum the the sum of the turning moment was a negative 41.08 so that's going to have a an anti-clockwise pulling effect on our um on our force system so just saying to keep in mind okay um show all of your workings okay um if you lay it out in this fashion it's easy to see where you if you if you make a mistake okay and you can go back and review it as well okay thanks for watching cheers